tied to just go up against when there's Avenge AA Ember Spirit. So yeah, yeah. There's the gap though. The Chen he's on a mount. He's pretty speedy. Chilling touch. Still with a pretty good bit of duration. Another magic missile from F God. That's the first blood. The Venge, the one to secure it. Early set of booty. Wants the ability just to control the back line a little bit. And what's nice about this is if he can catch the Chen or the Wind Ranger or someone who's sitting in the back, he has really long reach now. Like blink sleight of fists. And then with his ultimate, I mean, he can jump on somebody from really far away. We'll hold that bit of analysis though as they move into the Roche pit. Huge ravage from Nikwa, followed up by a channeled requiem from Pycat. They bring down the Vengeful Spirit and the Doom straight away. Lil next to follow. Mex being popped, but Illidan not going to be able to stand his ground. It doesn't look like Phobos doing what damage he can. Gets the kill on the Chen. But it's a bloody disaster. A one for four triple. But now they're in a position where that's that's their observer was. They've got to wait some time before they can pick up some more. It's going to be another four minutes. Yeah, uh, the irony is as much vision as possible with all the overlapping, you could have grabbed a, a lot more vision than that if they were spread a little more tactfully. Mid lane. Whoa, oh, there's Ravage number one. Connects on four. Ravage number two. Connects on five. Doom will go down first. Now Illidan left behind. Mechs up, but in a lot of trouble. He tries to TP home. That one won't happen. Lil chased down by Nikwa and on the other side of the fight FNG will try to TP home and get shackled in the mix it's a four for nil trade outside of the dire tier two mid the tide making it happen with as PyCat also picks up a Helm of the Dominator, a little bit of lifesteal, thinking about a Satanic in his near future. PyCat presses forward, gets stunned up, BKBs to avoid the stun, but still Viper struck. Will try to channel the Requiem perhaps, Doom number one, no refresher for 15, and this time they actually kill the Tide, now they get the kill on the Spirit Breaker after the Requiem. Maybe FNG will fall, he will indeed, Illidan in the danger zone, but they're all clumped up to try and bring him down, that's what Phobos wants. He's having a field day here in the mid as a triple kill comes out for Mag. Clears out all the Chen creeps. Pycat lobbing in some auto attacks. A long range charge from the Spirit Breaker. Is this enough to lock down Phobos and find a kill? Pycat still has an Aegis, so feeling rather brave here. Comes in. Fire Remnant buys Phobos some time. Now the four staff down to the low ground. Well, Mag gets initiated on here. Very deep. BGM comes in, loaded a follow up, but swap from FNG breaks up the damage from the Wind Ranger. May end up costing him his life, and he'll be on the run. Other side of the fight, Mag, Doom, BKB. That's a dead and... meat wife on the exit. Oh, he does. Yeah, it's plenty of damage. Now EGM will try and square up with the fiery sword, but I'm not sure he'll like the result. Loda doing a lot of damage, but eats the cheese. That'll keep him alive. All heal from Chen, also there to top him off. Doom just trying to move around, create some space for himself to survive. Pycat on the way in, though. It's a four on five on the field, but EGM charges the high ground, getting some vision. Loda even blinks up, secures the kill. Lil takes a requiem to the face, but will survive with the four step. Spirit Breaker finished off by the Ember Spirit. He's still around. Illidan, he's still here as well. They force out the BKB. Viper strike. The uphill attack does hit him as he's on the ramp. Loda chases down Lil in the meantime. We'll go to, to refresh. So kind of like Smokes here. Warding in the late game can be very limited resource. And mm -hmm. Pycat coming in. This is Radiant Vision we're looking at here. They catch wind of them. They've got the, uh, the gem on somebody. Pycat tries to BKB stand his ground. Mag going blow for blow with him. Where's the Tide? He hasn't joined the party yet. Pycat's the one that's been doomed. Now the Tide's on his way in. Doom goes down, but they have to trade Pycat for it. He's on the high ground thinking about the Ravage. Connects on two. Refresh. Doesn't even need the second Ravage to bring down Illidan. Ember Spirit, though, going to be a different story. They end up getting the kill on Lil. DK Phobos, they save the second Ravage just for him. He gets bashed right out of it. Triple for Loda and a four for nil exchange. Or four for one. Ravage. F God swaps him in. BKB gets used, lobbing in those auto attacks towards the Ember Spirit. Alliance looking like they want to retreat here. Need to be a little careful about how they go about this. Now Mag hops forward. Shiva's guard on. Pycat force stabbed aggressively. And now he's going to stand his ground as well. Has himself the Aegis and the Satanic. That buys him a little bit of time as he lays into the Doom. Now DK Phobos off to the side, trying to isolate two. Gets a crit on Chen to bring him down. EGM, he'll get brought down also. Now PyCat without a BKB stun, trying to channel. Can't get it off. Now he dies. And it's Alliance on the back foot all of a sudden. Only one buyback was used to make it a little more telling. There is an Axe Doom up, but this is getting to the point where it's like, who do you even Doom? The tie with the Refresher Orb, I feel like almost has to be Doomed if you want to stand a chance in the fight. At the same time, Loda, he's another big target you have to deal with, but Loda has buyback, so a Doom on Loda would be very costly. Swap onto Ake, that's a good way to start the fight. The all heal comes out, Force Staff keeps Ake alive. FNG not going to be so lucky. Loda, the one that's Doomed on the run just back. to try to survive. He's going to go back, he gets sent back now to the well. 
The Refresher, that's your second Ravage, connects on two. Does Pycat have the damage though? The Viper Strike slowing him down a little bit. They'll settle for Mag as they let the Viper walk away. Ice Blast comes in, will connect on a few heroes, but not going to save the Doom. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Illidan going blow for blow with the Tide. Viper Strike keeping him alive, but now Loda blinks forward, brings him down. It's a godlike streak for the Wind Ranger, and it'll be Alliance securing this mid lane of Barracks. Looking at the buyback tab, a little bit grim for Aces Polar. Doom has one, as does the Viper, but even utilizing them here, very costly. Yeah, and has to be very careful. There's a blink hex from Loda. He's going to be looking to initiate in on this Ember Spirit if he gets the chance to. That would be a, that, that's, that'd be GG if he gets that the Ember Spirit again. And there's the buyback on the Viper. Buyback. Being doomed has been sent back and lived. Twice in a row, Loda got sent back by the Test of Faith, mm -hmm. didn't actually die to the X Doom, and that to me is something you can't, can't afford to have happen. Yeah, at this stage of the game, yeah, you can't hand over those free kills and keep them alive. Mag comes in, Doom onto Loda this time. Ake still has the Test of Faith. But can he actually get there to help his friend? No. Beautiful swap from FNG. Buyback from Loda, though. Ready to get back into this fight. The double Ravage comes out. Connects on all five of Aces Polar. But will it actually yield to a successful fight? Tidehunter goes down. But they have to trade FNG for it. Loda's already back in the fray. Pycat channeling the Requiem. Not going to do too much, but will back. limit damage output. Loda dies for a second time. Oh, no. Now EGM gets picked off as well. The fight breaking out into all these mini skirmishes, but it's just Pycat alive. Doing a lot of damage to Mag, but in comes the Ember. This Ember Spirit now getting at that critical mass point. Big advantage as far as where things stand right now. There's no Ravages. There's no buyback on your Wind Ranger. This is not a Roshan I feel Alliance should be trying to contest, but... Yeah, they want to go for it. They have a little bit of vision. RP Storm Caller, Caller on his way in. Can they snatch the Aegis here? EGM just goes cruising on in. Will make it to the high ground, but now swapped by FNG. Will survive for now. Ravage number one. Phobos actually goes down first. They get the kill on the Spirit Breaker, but also lose the Venge. There's the Refresher from Mag. They end up bringing down Pycat. Gets Ake with on this the dude. run. The buyback from DK Phobos going to prove worth it here. The Trash Collector taking it out. Loda trying to make it away. Shackle onto Phobos. Can he find the kill? No, there's a Yules to break it up. And now Loda left behind and brought down. It'll be Aces Polar taking another successful fight. But only because to make this hole, Ooh, five shadow all on the line. They're lacking that detection they need for the shadow uh -oh. The gem carry, they don't have anyone with a slot. Where is the gem? Glyph comes out. Pycat comes in. There's your Ravage. Connects on quite a few, but Phobos dodges it from the low ground. Just he trying to throw out as much cleave damage as he can. Pycat's doomed. He gets cold footed and down he goes. Illidan in the front lines, being the bully he needs to be. Nikwa eats the cheese, but does it make a difference? I say nay. Viper goes down, he'll be coming back with the Aegis, and Alliance down for the count. Tied the only one with the buyback without a Ravage. What's the Watermelon going to do? They went for it. They tried to bring down that Doom knowing he had another ulti. The Ravage, the SF, but SF's damage output is just not quite enough. He even bought a Crystallis for that fight. I think if he had something like a Daedalus, it could have been enough, but Doom just tanky enough to survive that one and get off the ultimate before he went down, which is all he needed to do. Alliance not going to tap out quite yet, but this will be crippling damage. Bottom lane's already been destroyed. Mid lane going down here momentarily. And that leaves them one lane of barracks to go. Shadow Fiend down for still over a minute. Loda also down for about 10 seconds. He'll be coming up soon, but as we've talked about several times, without Ravage, Alliance really just can't take a fight. Yep. It's going to be... Probably Mega Creeps here, and without the Shadow Fiend, not really a fight they can take. Loda's gonna make one last hurrah, it looks like, but Doom up in 30 seconds as well. Here we go, charge onto Illidan. Loda goes in, the Focus Fire on, gets Yules again. Now the Nether Strike, they really want Illidan. They'll find him, but it's gonna cost them Loda. Lil will get beaten down by the Lantern, but again, is it gonna be worth it? Uh, it's not looking so good. Phobos comes in, a four-figure crit. Secure that one last kill with good measure. EGM buys back, charges in forward. Alliance on their last leg, desperately trying to make this hold, but Phobos is just so massive. He's got 4,000 gold on top of everything in his inventory right now. Ake sending back EGM, being a little cheeky. They're buying time here, but buying time for what? For yeah, Shadow exactly. to respawn and get doomed again. I guess this doom's going to go out on your Tide Hunter bit. Refresher up in 30 seconds. Mega Creep's going to be claimed, and Alliance I mean, this out is of just options. One long team fight where Aces Polar are just continuing to deliver these killing blows, buffing up their stats a little bit, and that will be the GG call. 43 to 34 in 61 minutes, guys. What a game, though. I, it's good to see the carry win ranger come out. Loda played that very nicely. It ended up the game with 17 kills, 9 assists. 
had a lot of impact there, so definitely something which was unexpected. We saw the draft. It's like, okay, carry Wind Ranger, kind of different, yeah. but definitely you cannot pin the loss there. I think uh, Aces Polar just slightly out executing and making just better decisions when it can't, when it really. Yeah. Aces Polar have actually just won the draft, though. Right? It um, just, it feels, I mean. He's totally stuck here? Yeah, as long as he okay. takes damage. If he stops taking damage, if he gets like some s sick RNG with the evasion, then maybe he walks to the low ground, but no. Alright, close call. Ooh. Well, he could. Well, it's a middle, could get here, but it may not be in time. Yeah, the medallion as well as the scream make this pretty damn easy. They're gonna shoot an ice blast over, but I think the intel is gonna come out just a bit too late. Yeah. Take a look at Radiant Vision here, they see the Roche. They rotate down, it's gonna be close. It runs pretty low too. Roche falls, Aegis goes the way of Slark, Venno gets off the Poison Nova on four. The duel comes out, and the winner is Nikwa, but still huge damage coming on him. Now Venge falls, they finally get the kill on the Legion. Say goodnight to your Aegis of the Immortal, but also the Leshrac. Slark coming back up, maybe they can do cleanup here. Mag coming on in with the webs. Ake, he'll be slowed down, brought down. EGM just TPs out, no way to stop him. It yeah, will be up, Aces Polar that... ...as you would hope. Yeah, agreed. So Illidan again, we're on the Illidan cam here. He sees an LC mid. Nikwa, you're gonna run bump right into the danger zone. No double damage, but I think Illidan's feeling A-OK. -okay. The blade mail doesn't do much against the BKB. Pycat TP's in, mechs up Nikwa, but it's just not enough. Phobos now taking a lot of damage, drops the ultimate before he dies. Will try to TP out, it won't happen, but still squishes him up quite a bit for the rest of Aces Polar to come in and try and take out the trash. Illidan on the high ground, ready to reinitiate. If he finds the opening, will go in to try and save Will. That won't happen, but he finds Loda. Isolates him, taking a lot of damage, but still gets the kill. Mag on the other side of the fight, zoning out the rest of the team, doing a lot of damage, and now they will kill this snowball. EGM slated for death. It's a five for two trade, a full five man wipe. No help from the team fight recap, but Rest assured, item is not something it's like, oh, I gotta get the upgrade. Yeah, it's it's just, it's not his value on Brood. Pretty much everyone else, but the, basically the 10% movement speed is wasted as he's on web, so you were talking about that earlier. Again, Lil has been on point this game with his saves, and I imagine will continue to be so. Oh yeah, Edict is actually physical now. That was, yeah. I thought it was magic that just had spell piercing, but it actually is physical damage. It used to be a hybrid, yeah, composite, yeah. I think. Oh, Ake, he gets bumped into. Mag, man it up on Nikwa. Illidan's here as well. Who's going to win the duel? It's going to be the LC. Brute falls first, but this Slark, the Hamburglar, just dropping hammers all over this Radiant side. 50% man, 50% Murloc, 100% beast as he's isolated in the trees. There's the reinitiation, and now Alliance just implodes on top of itself. Swap to interrupt the TP onto Pycat, and they trade. One for five after an awkward initiation in the jungle. It's Aces Polar coming out way ahead. He's dead for another 40. FNG manages to pick up his Agonims on the Lich. They force out the Radiant Glyph. And Radiant mid lane of Barracks will be cleaned up. Now, where do they go from here is the question. Looks like they will continue pressing forward. Loda holding the buyback. And at this point, I think he will try to save it indefinitely. Another 10 seconds though, and that's 10 seconds they can work on these melee barracks. Illidan will grab the tier 3 tower up top, pounce forward, looking for EGM, but can't quite connect. And now Aces Polar will back out and at least act. Mm. Just throw it casually down bottom lane and... Yeah. Won't have it immediately for the high ground. High ground, not that's going to be the biggest issue. Pretty short, short cooldown on that ultimate, but... No glyph available for Alliance, and yeah. Slark I really may just go for the backdoor top. It looks like that is the plan. He's shadow bladed in. His teammates will just all pressure the bottom lane. They can fight without it. They've got poison over. He takes the courier out. Okay, that's a little little pit stop there. Just a Basilius and uh, a TP scroll on the courier, so not a huge deal. EGM in the tree line, getting scouted out by Mag. Meanwhile, in the top, Illidan pulling their efforts to focus on him. There is no glyph here. Mag gets initiated on Sigil. Coming around the tree line, FNG will mech up as they actually start this fight. Mex goes out before the Ice Blast, so good timing there. Chain Frost bouncing around. Remember, it's Ags. Will stop bouncing at Loda, but now he's in big trouble. Mag with BK Beyond gets dual, but now Phobos joining the party. Illidan still 
not fighting down here, but taking out the top lane of Barracks, and Ace's Polar winning the fight without him. Now Pycat isolated on the backside. The Tusk gets brought down. Loda, the lone survivor, as he watches his base fall to pieces. Mega Creeps inbound, and Alliance going to be forced to tap out here momentarily. And that's a team fight they take without even the Slack. Slack's just up top lane securing the racks. They fleet four on five. Yeah. And they know that this is like the safe way to end the game because that fight doesn't even matter for Aces Polar whether it's a 50-50 fight, whether it's a, a fight that Alliance slightly win it. If they got that Hex initiation on Brood, killed Brood, without the swap save, it doesn't matter because Illidan gets top rack. So even if that fight goes poorly... Even a loss is still a win. Yeah, it's still a win. And GG will come out. Aces Polar going through the ES Portal Grand Finals here to take on the Power Rangers and try to join three other teams being Hull Racers, Empire, and Mayan Sanity in the main event. Exciting stuff. So that's the best of five coming up tomorrow. These quick uh, invitationals, man, they end as fast as they start. Just boom, 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 right on through. And should be a great BO5 coming up tomorrow. Another fun series to watch. Alliance keeping things interesting, experimenting a bit with the Tusk. Teamfight Ultimate. Not a Ravage is going to be the Supernova coming out yeah. from the Phoenix, which I kind of I like. Anyway. Taking a lot of damage, but he will be able to make it out. Now it's Ape Mother that's kind of on the back foot. We've got a numbers advantage for the Power Rangers. They'll converge onto Ape Mother, and that's first blood draw. It'll go the way of Seneca. Here's the kill. Now all three lanes favoring the Power Rangers. Yeah. Down bottom, Handskin initiated on by J4. There's the Fissure to break it up. Stun on three, but Slardar makes it out of the kinetic field, and the Slytherin Guard finds a kill to get things started. Grave from the Dazzle to make sure Slardar survives. And no way for Error to press forward and look for the kill. It's a one for nil in favor of the Power Rangers. And oh, daddy, while we're looking at that, mid lane QW. Solo kill. Yeah, PR force out the glyph down bottom. They do have uh, some decent pushing power just from the sustain with the dazzle. Even you TP mid. Oop. Yes, it is. That's going to be a lasso on to Era. Ditya comes in. Slithering crush in time. And, well, it's dead Storm Spear. Easy as that for the Power Rangers. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Hanskin initiated on by QW. Glimpsed back. Batrider comes in and burns him down. Oh, boy. That's unfortunate for the Raptor. Hanskin almost making it. Power Rangers, uh, although giving up a death, still get a tower out of it. Now Jonas Lasso four stats back into the tower. Cheshire's cat. Oh boy, Cheshire Cat's farm continuing to impress as he has. Could be a wrap around inbound though. Era, invisibility rune on, thinking about the proper angle to initiate here. Laser will start to repel the Power Rangers. Glyph comes out, Seneco, the one initiated on. Glimpse back, still gets off the grave. Whoa, the fast fingers on the Shadow Priest. Keeps him alive. Now the swap in from J4. Requiem gets channeled around the backside. Ditya goes in. A double as the Troll and Storm get melted. Disruptor goes down shortly after. And that'll be it. NIP tap out early. They've had enough of this slaughter. 16 to 4 in 15 minutes, Parker. You know, we've had all these hour-long games. The last two days, there's not been a game that was under 30 minutes. We've had a couple that were like 35. Most were going 50, 60 minutes, but holy cow, PR just come flying out of the gates here. And not the team we thought it would be. Certainly I didn't. Uh, I was hyping up NIP thinking they'd be the ones yeah. to come in strong against PR with a stand-in. But I don't know who this QW guy is, but you wouldn't even know that he's a stand-in based on that performance. Even like a slug type hero would have been a bit too greedy with Brood. Mm. Brood's always going to farm a lot and just not die. dust yeah. everything. Just oh, this is catastrophic. And I think you're going to get a kill on the witch doctor. Seal kid, the seal cub clubbing first club blood. is real. First blood's drawn as Cheshire Cat makes it happen. Spawn. All right, mother will. Uh, uh oh, but on the other side, Seal Kid and Handskin perhaps in some trouble here. The cast bouncing around, doing some work. J4 getting charged, but there's your stampede. All heal from Chen to pick up NIP. In comes the Space Cow, not even going to need it. Now switches to QW. The ult from Quap doing a lot of damage here. Actually gets the kill uh, onto the cow, and now they find the kill on the Shadow Feed. It's a one for three, make it a four for one. Oh my gosh. CM did get the deny to Roshan, but NIP. Stage once they group up and get that five man going. Dichir has also not played a very good game with a Centaur, and like, I mean, normally he's like the the standout player of this team, and he's made a few bad calls of when to initiate, how to use his mana, and paid the price a few times. Oh my, Seneco just blown up by the Chen Hanskin doing so much damage. Radiant's Courier also getting picked off with a decent bit of gold on it. That's a Midas recipe. Oh my god. That is one of the... ...on the Brood. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like the Centaur has been... One of the, the weaker aspects of this PR draft, just in terms of his general initiations, 
Cheshire Cat up top, gonna find himself in a rough situation here. Gets knocked to the low ground, but will be dusted. In comes the Quap Deathward from the high ground. It's another kill going the way of Team Nip. Now in the bottom, they will get aggressive onto Seneco. Era doing some damage, laying in the frost arrows. Ditya hops forward, pump fakes the stun. Still alive for now, stun on two. Out comes the freezing field. They get the kill onto Handskin. Now they find it onto the Drow as well. Nice turnaround. The CM lives with just a handful of hit points. Beautiful setup to make that one happen. But now the charge, Ditya He's got a stampede. Does he burn it here? Trying to time the hoofstock. Can't get it. And Jonas playing the cleanup. Now back to the lane. Shadow Fiend squaring up against Seal Kid. And he's not going to like the way this one ends up. Or will he? Gets the kill there. Now squaring off against Ape Mother. He will have a screen in just one second here. QW almost gets it with the last raise. Very he low on HP. He could, he could get charged or ulti too. Oh, he's got the negative urn on now. Quap wants to make it happen. QW pump faking a little bit, trying to anticipate the blink. Almost gets it, but Jonas gets the unstoppable streak as he brings him down. Nice play by Shadow Fiend there. Ooh, Era might need to be a little bit careful here. He'll be all right for now. Meanwhile, in the dire jungle, Handskin initiated on. They'll go ahead and use the stampede. QW with the double damage blocked out by his own team's Fissure. But it doesn't matter. Still find the kill as the centaur rotates over. The hammer gets dropped, and whoa, more initiation. Seal Kid running in. Quite brave he is. And that bravery will cost him everything and anything. Era, now low on mana, compliments of these Necronomicon units. Standing his ground as best he can. Does have the Aegis of the Immortal still. He's not careful. Jonas comes charging on in. Around the backside, Aegis goes down. Sonic Wave flies through. Uh-oh, QW off to the side, Ooh. that's a one-shot KO onto the Drow Ranger, oh boy, this Shadow Fiend, he knows his limits here, Parker, he's going to pick up a triple kill. Maybe they're going to start things off with the challenge. And charge in onto QW, he'll start in the front lines and around the backside, Seneco is going to be the one initiated on QW, it's going to be alright for now, looks like he blinked out. And who's actually going to be initiated on first? It's going to be Seal Kid. He survives. Quap with a decent ulti will bring down QW out of the gate. They'll have to trade their Chen for it, though. Death Ward channel for pretty close to full duration. Huge damage coming out as it's a one for three. NIP taking the fight as Ditya Ra gets locked down as well. I think that was all the Witch Doctor there for the most part. It was a great Sonic Wave, but Seal Kid. This is Radiant Vision we're looking at. They see Roche at about half health. They need a stall with these spider wings, like greatest distraction. They've they've done that. I mean, they're gonna make it here in time. There you go. QO BKB channels the Requiem from afar. Roche still alive for now. The all heal from Chen isn't gonna be enough. Cheshire Cat trying to focus down Handskin off to the side. He'll be successful on that front. Era uses his BKB as he tries to make the escape. Witch Doctor gets locked down, and it looks to be successful for PR. The Shadow Fiend falls. But the closing Requiem will help with some extra damage. Now the charge up to the high ground to try and deal with Seneco. He'll be safe for now. They have to pay with their Earth Shaker. And ooh, not going to have the vision to bring down Jonas. Game winning gust. That, well, not game winning, but a huge gust from Arrow. He's going to die at the bottom tier 2 tower now with the Brood, unfortunately. But he's. Well, Brood is actually going to cause even more problems here. The gust, the dust comes out, and Spirit Breaker will win that man. Back row. No, slow. Oh, no. And Jonas, one more right click, it's enough. That nope. CM blinked to the high ground and was using the freezing field, was looking to use a freezing field from the high ground, but the... He does have this butterfly, he's looking to flank here, but no money for a buyback. This is... risky time for PR. Yeah, now he does have uh, BKB cheese though, so still feeling pretty safe. Jonas thinking about charging on in, just channels the nether strike early on the QW. Requiem will get channeled. J4 comes in. Big dunk. Big fissure. They get a quick kill on the Dro. All heal comes out, but Seal Kid will fall to the right clicks of QW. A lot of damage comes out in return onto the Radiant side, but PR is still going to take this fight, it looks like. Three for three. Make it a three for four. Ultra kill for QW. Even though it's a three for four trade, Shadow Fiend to save it to either interrupt that first Requiem channel or just yeah. to lock him down like while he's in that BKB and you like that that is valuable lockdown that you can't afford to just kind of throw away as an opener when you have all this other damage. The other big thing is Jonas not having a BKB. If he has a BKB there, he doesn't get frostbitten into Requiem mm -hmm. and maybe it's a play oh, you can make. Seal Kid walks right into the danger zone. Sonic Wave will clear out some spiders but doesn't do any damage outside of that. Q or QW trying to channel the Requiem will get interrupted this go around but still has the cooldown available. They're gonna press forward. They now find the kill on Ape Mother. He'll buy back straight away, but it won't be enough to save Handskin. Seal Kid channeling the ultimate from 
Well, close range. Ditya Ra walks up, gives him the hoof stomp. That'll stop him dead in his tracks. Freezing Field now doing so much damage. Gets the kill on the Spirit Breaker and NIP all of a sudden on the back foot, getting dove to the tier fours. Blink forward from Seneco. Era caught inside of the stun, and now he'll be brought down. Oh, no. No buyback available for him. Quap's the only one that is bought back. No, that was actually a dieback on the Witch Doctor as well. Yeah. Is this the GG push oh, all of a sudden? This is it. The Sonic Wave's going to come out, but they're going to lose 8, mother! Oh, that's a dieback. Seneco with those fast fingers on the blink. GG is called. It was such an even game until then, that all of a sudden, NIP just get caught a little bit unaware, not quite ready for it. And the whole game just implodes like that. One pickoff turns into a couple more. Witch Doctor got the Ag Scepter, but... PR just dealt with that Witch Doctor so well every oh, fight. We didn't see a good death board really. There was that used. one at the tier one in the bottom lane where yeah. he got the he, they initiated on him. He barely survived and had like a full duration death ward the entire fight. That was the one time.